Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can create pop-ups using Elementor Free and Jet Pop-ups plugin. This plugin is an advanced add-on for Elementor and it allows you to create pop-ups, to style them, to set the position of the pop-up on the page, to set different kinds of animations, set trigger events, which means the events that trigger the appearance of the pop-up. And you can use these pop-ups that you create with this plugin for any purpose because you can put any type of content in there, such as subscribe forms, countdown timers, contact forms, some informational messages to inform your visitors about sales, etc. So you can use these pop-ups for lots and lots of different purposes. And also another great advantage of this plugin is that it comes with lots and lots of pre-made designs. So it comes with a huge library of already designed templates. So you can grab any of those, change the content to your own and you're ready to go. So as I've said, you can purchase this plugin separately if you follow the link in the description. But if you want to get this plugin and tons of other plugins, you might be interested in looking into Monstrate to WordPress theme. This theme is the ultimate tool for creating great websites with WordPress and Elementor. It comes with hundreds of pre-designed pages and sections, a dozen of Elementor add-ons, all the skins that you get within the theme and all the pages and sections are easy to manage because the collection can be accessed from one single place. So enough with the introduction, let's start creating pop-up templates with the help of Jet pop-up plugin for Elementor. So in this video, I'm going to be working with the WordPress theme for the online store. And this particular theme is a part of Monstroid 2. And you can learn more about Monstrate 2 if you follow the link in the description. So once you have installed and activated Jet Pop-up on your website, hover over the label on the left sidebar menu. And there you have a number of options. But if you're just starting out with Jet Pop-up, you're not going to see any of templates here in the list because you have not created anything yet. Here you have a number of options. The first one is add new pop-up. If you click add new pop-up, it's going to take you to the Elementor editor straight away and you're going to start creating your pop-up template from scratch. You can also import um, the file with already existing design and uh, start using it here on this website. Or you can go to pop-up layout and it's going to allow you to choose the position which your pop-up template is going to have, but you're going to be able to change the size and the position of the pop-up template later. So if you don't want to create the pop-up template from scratch, you can go and access our pop-up library. So you can save a ton of time just using the pre-made design and changing the content to your own. So here, as you see, there is a filter. You can filter it by a category and by date, name and the popularity. These templates feature different types of content. So it can be a contact form, it can be an informational message. Here you can see how many people have already used this template on their live websites. And if you hover over this icon, you're going to see what other plugins this particular template requires. So this one requires Jet Elements and is considered to be the most popular add-on for Elementor and provides almost 50 additional widgets to the already existing set that you have in Elementor free. And if you're interested in learning more about Jet Elements plugin, you can find the link to it in the description. But as you can see, not all of these templates require using any other plugins except for Jet Pop-up itself. Now we'll just click on this template and go to Elementor editor and start working on it. So as you can see, the design is fully editable and you can change any part of it and work with it as with any other section or element as you always do in Elementor. So now what we're going to do here is to set the trigger events. Let's click on this cogwheel icon right here in your left hand bottom corner. And what we're going to see here are general settings where you can change the title. Also, the settings that allow you to choose the type of animation that you want to use for this particular pop-up. And you can preview all of them right here in real time in your editor. And here the open event. 
This means the trigger event. So the action of the user that triggers the appearance of the pop-up. So here we have a number of those. On page load. This means that once the page is done loading, the pop-up is going to appear. Here you can set the open delay in seconds. That means that depending on how many seconds you set here, this is going to be the delay for the appearance of the pop-up. So for example, if you set three in there, your pop-up is going to appear three seconds later after the loading of the page is finished. Also, you can see the show once option here. It's pretty obvious. It means that this pop-up is going to appear only once for this particular user. But if you want, you can repeat showing this pop-up after a certain period of time, like 10 minutes, 30 minutes, etc. And the loading content with Ajax option is going to allow you to delay the loading of the content in the pop-up itself. So the content of the pop-up is going to start loading once the pop-up opens on the page. So user inactivity time after. Here in the field, you set the amount of time of the user being inactive that the pop-up needs to appear on the page. So after the user is inactive for, let's say, 20 seconds, then he or she is going to see the pop-up. Then page scrolls. So here set the percent to which the user needs to scroll the page. Like if it's 50%, it's like half of the page. And after the user has scrolled to the half of the page, he or she is going to see the pop-up. Then try exit. This is a pretty simple one. Once the user tries to move the cursor somewhere outside the page itself, let's say to the address bar or to click on another tab, they are going to see this pop-up appearing. So this event is going to trigger the appearance of the pop-up. Then on date. This might be specifically useful if you want to announce the sale for specific dates. And this pop-up is going to only appear on this particular date. and the custom selector click, the last one, but the pretty interesting one. So this option allows you to bound the appearance of the pop-up to the specific element. And once the user clicks on the element that has the custom CSS selector that is set right here in this field, it is going to trigger the appearance of the pop-up. So it could be clicking on a certain button or on a slider or something like that. But now what we're going to do for our example, we're going to set the trigger event as try exit. And once I'm going to move my cursor somewhere outside this page, I'm going to see this pop up. Now we have another pretty interesting set of settings, which is display settings. Here you can see that you can choose for which roles this option is going to be available to edit. And now let's have a look at the conditions that we have here. So you add the condition and here you see that you have two options, include or exclude. Let's say if you set include and choose entire site, this is going to mean that this particular pop-up template is going to appear on every single page of your website. But usually you don't want that. But how do you determine on which pages this pop-up is not going to appear? This is where you're going to need the exclude option. What you do here is you add one more condition, select the exclude option, one of the two, and then you simply put the pages like singular 404 page or singular post type post. And these are going to be uh, those types of pages where the pop-up is not going to appear. So. You remember include, this is where the pop-up appears, exclude, where pop-up is not going to appear. So you save your progress, then you see this notification and you're pretty much done with the display settings. Next, let's proceed to the style settings. Here in the general styles tab, you're going to see the Z, changing Z index to a positive value allows you to ensure that your pop-up is being on top of all the content of your page and nothing, something like a sticky header is not gonna be on top of it and it's not gonna cover it. So here you can change the width and the height of the pop-up container, change the position of the pop-up itself and the position of the content. And the, all the other settings are pretty much 
the same as you have in Elements Editor. So you can change the style of every element. So you can change the style of the background, the border radius, change the style of the close icon. So the one which you need to click in order to close the pop-up. And here you can choose whether you want to use the overlay uh, for this pop-up or not. Overlay is going to be on top of the page once the pop-up appears. So here you change the color and decide how transparent it is going to be. Now let's test it. So I've opened the home page. Here I am and I'm trying to move my cursor to the address bar and there we go. We see this pop-up appearing on the page. So this is pretty much it about how you create pop-ups with Jet Pop-up plugin. And if you want to see more Elementor tutorials or Jet Pop-up tutorials, comment your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to click the links in the description under this video to learn more about Jet Pop-up plugin, Jet Elements plugin and Monstrate to WordPress theme. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.